Hi, it's Adam from Impact Gamers here, and for this retro remake, we're going to be making in Click Team Fusion a pinball simulator. So, back way when in the 70s and 60s, even in the 50s, pinball was really, really popular, and then when digital systems came out, they made simulators. So, you might remember if you were old enough. 3D Pinball on Windows 95 and 98, uh, but anyway, we've taken our own take on it, a horror-themed and computer-themed table called Horrorball. Let's show you how to make it. So once you've loaded up Click Team Fusion, we're going to start a new application. So from the top menu, just click on File and on New. And we're going to change the application size. So currently, all of the levels, all the frames are set at 640 by 480 and we want them much bigger than that. So we're going to click on application one and we're going to go down to the window properties in the properties toolbar and we're going to change the size. So click on the numbers, the 640 by 480 and you can alter them, but even quicker, there's a down arrow, a little V here and you can choose, I'm going to go for 1280 by 720. Um, and that's the size that I've set up for the artwork in this tutorial. When you click off it, it will ask you, would you like to modify the frames to match the same as the application? Yes, we want the levels to uh, be that size. Later, we'll extend them. But for the moment, this is how big we want the screen of the game to be. So we're going to go into frame one. Just click on the number one next to the thumbnail. And here we are in the frame editor. Now you'll see that it almost, you can almost not see the edges of the screen. I'm just going to change the size so you can. The gray area is all of the areas outside of the screen and the white area is the game. So we're going to add our ball in, the pinball, the ball bearing, the silver ball that we're going to use in our pinball game. So we're going to click on insert at the top and new object and it's going to move. So it's going to be active. Press OK. Click to put it down and then we're going to edit it. So if you right click on it and choose edit, we will then import and from the assets import ball.png. Okay. Now with these settings, um, it's useful if the hotspot and the action point are set to the center of mass or the hotspot especially because that's where all the calculations are done from. So press OK and then press OK again. That's not going to move yet until we change its movement properties. So with the ball selected, we're going to click on this blue running man. We're going to choose physics static movement. Now we could choose bouncing ball movement. They're very similar. It's just things are set up in a different way. Um, we'll need to insert a physics engine. We'll do that in a second. But the difference is physics static starts with elasticity of zero and bouncing ball with 100%. We want ours to be 20%. And also we want to make sure we turn off auto rotations because we don't want the ball spinning round, the image spinning round, because the reflection on a ball bearing always stays the same way up. That's great. Now we need to remember to add in the physics object. But before we do that, we'll just rename it. And let's call it pinball. So we'll insert the physics engine, insert new object, and here it is, the physics engine. And we'll place this outside of the screen in the gray area because it's invisible anyway. But we do want to change a setting about it. If we go into the settings, we want to change its gravity strength. So currently it's set at 10 and we want to set it to 30 because 10 is quite slow. Okay, if we run our application, we'll see that the ball just falls down off screen. And if we file a new to start again, the ball will fall off screen. And that's fine. So now we're going to add in some obstacles into the world so the ball doesn't fall straight down. And they're going to be backdrops. So we're going to click on insert, new object, and we're going to choose backdrops. Backdrops use less memory. Also, we can have in the free edition, we can have a hundred different types of backdrop objects, um, but we can only have 30 types of other objects in the free edition. So we'll put backdrop in, click to put it down, and we're going to change the runtime options on it. So the obstacle type goes from none 
to being obstacle. This is really important, otherwise the ball won't sense when it's hit it. So change the obstacle type to obstacle in the runtime set properties. You can change the way it looks, going to right click and edit, and we're going to import. And we've got some pre-made shapes here. Now there's quite a lot, so um, you can take your time. There's all these barrier shapes, and you can pick any of those. So you can click, and then it might not show it correctly, but don't worry. Whatever one you selected, it will load up. There's the triangle there. And press OK. And then you can clone that if you want to. Right click and clone to make a second version of it. And then you can double click and import and import a, another shape. And press OK. And uh, you can just keep on doing that. If you want a shortcut to save lots of time, if you load up the folder with your assets in, so with the folder loaded up, what I can do is if I go into the blank space here and with the assets, if I select them all, by I'm just clicking on the first one, then I'm gonna hold down shift and click on the last one. Then I'm gonna pull from the folder into click team and you see the little plus signs appeared that means it's going to add it in so if i let go click team will then ask me what are these well they're backdrops and i can click to assign this type press ok and it'll add them all in in one go don't worry about naming them because the simple fact is that you'll be able to see on the side what they are and i'm not sure how you'd name this slight angle compared to this one. But the other thing is we need to make sure they're obstacles. So I'm gonna click and pull and drag a selection box over them and change the obstacle type of all of them at once. So under runtime options, I'm gonna change it to obstacle. And that's a very quick way to do it. And now we've got these assets in this uh, window here and we can just drag and drop any that we need along. So I'll just drop a couple of in and if you test your application you will see that it won't work so if we run application it'll drop through and that's because we're missing an event and it's just one event for all of the collisions if we go into the event editor at the top we click on the words new condition and it's to do with the pinball collision with a backdrop any backdrop it doesn't matter anything that's an obstacle it will run this event for so condition collides with the background we want to right click on the ball and say movement stop now if we run our application you can see that the ball sits much better and uh, you could even put it the other side and watch it interact with the other things there we go so that's that tested Right, so we're happy with the width of the, the pimple table, but the height is it's very small. So what we're going to do is change the frames height, not the application. So this way, the game size will have a window of the application, but the level itself will be able to go much lower. So if you click on frame one and go into its settings, on its size, it's got the width and then the height, 720. We click on the numbers and select the 720. Now, you can choose anything. You could choose it to be 1,000 if it's a very small table, or 2,000, 3,000. I probably wouldn't go much higher than 3,000, but there we go. 3,000 and press Enter, and then you've got a great height. Just so that we can tell when the ball's moving, because with the ball falls on a white screen, we've got no reference. We're going to insert a new object. This is going to be the background. It's going to be a quick backdrop, which is different from a normal backdrop because you can actually change it to be a repeating pattern. In the settings, if you click to drop it down, change it from a solid color to a motif and then press edit. Then we can import the artwork and get the background for the pinball table. Uh, pinball background. There we go. Press OK and OK. Now, to place it quickly, we're just going to click Size and Position. And it's going to start off in the top corner, which is 00, top left. The width being 1280. 
from before and the height being that 3000 we've just put in. And then that way it will fill the complete screen. You can see that this dashed line here is the, the size of the application. Um, and then below you can see there's another dashed line for the end of the screen. So let's lock that in place. We're going to cl click on arrange and lock selected objects. That way we can't move it and we can get on with positioning everything we want without dragging it around. To make your play field, which is the area of which the pinball game happens, you'll need to do, um, you need to use all of your backdrop objects that you want and you'll need to create certain areas. There's normally a top section of the play field, a mid section, a bottom section, and then at the very bottom, there's the drain where the flippers go and the pinball drops down where it leaves. There's also the shooter lane, which is a lane up the side, sort of a barrier on one side. So the ball can go all the way to the top of the table when you fire the spring, the plunger. So um, you can take as long as you want on this or as not as long. But by using the backdrop objects, just dragging them in, and just using them bit by bit overlap. And it's a good idea if you've got a grid turned on. So in your grid setup, I've set mine to five, five, snap to. Um, and then you can add in your backdrops and you can use these. Now don't go all the way to the very top, leave a gap because we're gonna have the scores displayed at the top of the screen. So probably I would leave a good section here where the ball can't go to, where we'll put our, our score along the top. I'm going to shortcut this and just show you a table that I've already made. So here's one that I've copied and pasted in. I've added a curved area around the top to keep the ball in. I've, if I zoom out, I'll show you it more. I've got the shooter lane up the side where the ball is going to be fired up. A top section, a mid section separated by some barriers I've put in, and um, a bottom section where the drain is going to go. Now, if I zoom in again, you can see that all these pieces are made out of multiple pieces of barrier on top of each other. So they're just overlapping each other to smooth it out. And because you can have so many background objects, um, that works quite well. And they don't take, like I say, they don't take up much memory. Um, and they're very fast to calculate the collisions. So I'm going to save this version and I'm going to put this on the web page so that you can download it with any resources. Make sure you save your work as well. One thing to be aware of is where you're going to add your flippers, the the sort of bats that hit the ball around, we're going to add a different type of object. It's going to be an active one. So if you click on insert new object and choose active, drop it down, right click and edit it. We're going to import flipper cover. Now this is going to be a background object, but a physics background object. So press OK and just move that to position. And let's rename it as a flipper cover one. So just click on about and in the name properties, flipper cover one. And we're going to change its movement properties. We're going to change it from static to physics background. Now, the reason that it's an active object and a background is it needs to be in front. And all the other background objects can't be in front of actives. So uh, because our ball, um, is active, it will always be in front of the background objects, but the flippers are going to be active as well, and we want them to be behind this cover. So we're going to choose physics background, and we're just going to make sure we change it to be obstacle in its properties, in its movement properties there. All right, fantastic. We're going to add another one at the bottom. So let's just find it on the list. Flipper cover one. We're going to add one down here. And this is all saved on the templates. So don't worry about it. Um, but we're going to clone it. And we're going to use this clone to be the other side. So we're going to click on it twice or right click and edit either. 
and then just choose to flip it horizontally. Now it's really important that the hotspot is in the gravitational center. If it's not, all the calculations about where things hit won't work. And I'll just double check on flipper cover one that the gravitational center is in the middle, which it seems to be there. Okay, great. So you can test that and watch the ball, hold the, move the ball to the top and test it and watch it drop to the bottom. And you'll notice one problem. That it doesn't follow the screen. So if we go to the event editor, we're going to do a new condition and just click on the cogs special always and then right click underneath storyboard controls and choose scrollings center window position in frame we're always going to follow it relative to the pinball now if we run our application You can watch it roll from the top to the bottom. Fantastic. Now, we also don't want the ball to go off the edges of the screen. So what we'll do is we'll say a new condition that the ball position, test position, that if it goes off at the top, if we haven't got a barrier in place, the left or the right, but not the bottom, we need it to fall off the bottom. Then under the ball, right click movement and stop. And then that way, it means that the side where we haven't got a barrier down here will still act as a barrier. The, the ball won't be able to travel through it. Okay, make sure you save your work. In order to be able to test our level properly, we're gonna add in some tilt options. Now tilting on a pinball table is when you nudge it to the left or the right or lift it upwards and that would normally trigger an alarm but for developing the game we need to be able to move this ball to where we want. So we're going to go into our event editor and then I'm going to click on the last line on line four here and click insert group of events because that's where I want it to appear and I'll call it tilt. Now I'm going to use the arrow keys for this so new condition that if the keyboard, upon pressing a key, and I'll press the up arrow, then I want to apply a force to the ball. So right click, movement, physics, apply impulse. So it's not a force, sorry, a force would keep it moving. It would be like an engine to it, and impulse is more a push. So apply an impulse, 100 seems okay, and um, the angle. So you've got to remember zero is pointing to the right, 90 is up and um, 180 is left and 270 is down. So this is up, so it's gonna be 90. I'm going to then new condition, keyboard upon pressing a key down arrow. And then this time I'm gonna right click movement physics, apply an impulse and it's down. So that's 270, degree, oh sorry, 100 impulse, 270 degrees. And then new condition, keyboard, upon pressing a key, left arrow, then right click on the ball, um, movement, physics, apply impulse, still 100. And then the angle is 180. Now, I don't type these out every time, so there's some quick ways to do this. So what you can do for the last one, I'll show you the quick way. You can drag a condition onto a condition to copy it. Then if you double click it, you can just edit it. So I'm gonna do right arrow. And then you can do the same with tick. So I can drag this tick down, right click and edit it. And impulse of 100, but this time the angle is gonna be zero. So it's just a little bit quicker. So you can double click a condition to edit it and you can right click and edit a tick and you can drag them about to copy them anywhere. So now we run our application. We can use the arrow keys to move the ball about the screen. So if I want to move it back up to the top of the screen, I can just keep on tapping up, move it and want to move it to the shooter lane. 
and move it out of the shooter lane. So I can just use the arrow keys and move it to where I want, want it to be, as if I was hitting the table. And later on, we can add a tilt alarm if we want. Just check that the, there we go, that the covers are working. Brilliant. And close that. Don't forget to save your work. Now we're going to add in the plunger for the shooter lane, the spring that fires the ball up. So we're going to go into our frame editor. And we'll go to the very bottom of the screen. And this is where it's going to be positioned. So we're going to insert a new object. It's going to be active because it's going to have to move. We're going to click to put it down. And we're going to right click and edit it. And we're going to import. And we'll import the spring. And the hotspot in the center of the mass to calculate the collisions correctly. And OK. Fantastic. And just going to move it so it's at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to name it. So, in terms of the properties, click about and on its name, we'll call it the plunger. Now, before we add anything else into the code, we want to add in a counter. So we're going to insert a new object, counter, and I'm just going to put it off screen. Maybe underneath would be best the plunger. This is going to calculate the power. I'm going to rename the counter. So in its about properties, we're going to call it pullback because this is the strength that we're going to pull back with. I'm going to change its settings, initial value of zero, a minimum value of zero, and a maximum value of 100. Now, this 100 is going to refer to how many pixels the plunger's pulled back, but also we're going to use it as a, a measure of power. So I'm just going to click on the plunger one more time and find out in its size and position, its Y position. So it's 2,944 on my screen. So take note of that, 2,944. I'm going to go into the event editor. And we're going to add a new group of events. So we're going to click at the bottom, insert group of events, and we will call this plunger. Uh, the first rule is about positioning the pun plunger. So we're going to click new condition, cogs for always, and we always want it to be positioned. So right click under the plunger on that line, position the Y coordinate, the up down coordinate to be the starting position 2944 from what we saw before. Uh, if you've forgotten, you can probably click on the workspace toolbar, um, click off this and have a look on the workspace toolbar and find it again. But we remember it's 2944 plus, so just the plus sign there, whatever the counter is, the current value. Fantastic. Next, we'll have a space bar, which is sort of traditional on pinball games, to be the, the ball launch, the plunger pullback. So new condition. And it's to do with the keyboard. Repeat while key is pressed. And spacebar. What we'll want to do here is we'll just want to add to the pullback. So if we right click, add to counter, one. The next thing we're going to do is say what happens when spacebar is not pressed. So new condition, it's the same start so the keyboard repeat while key is pressed space bar but then we're going to right click on those words and choose negate so it's not pressed now this is going to happen all the time that space bar isn't pressed so we'll need to limit it so we're going to right click and insert a limit so right click insert special limit only one action when this event loops not run when once or repeat only one action when event loops so every time we let go of space bar this will run immediately after and what we're going to do is we're going to run another condition we're going to use a timed condition so fire an event after a given delay zero seconds immediately and let's call this fire I could call it launch but i'm going to call it fire it's going to fire the ball great so now we need to check to see if the ball is hit when you let go of spacebar so new condition on the time on event fire make sure you leave those speech marks in those uh, double quotations fire and then right click and insert if the pinball is overlapping 
the plunger. So at the instance we let go of spacebar, if the ball is overlapping the plunger, we want to apply an impulse to it, the same way we did with tilt. So movement, physics, oh, it's just off screen, sorry about that. Apply impulse. And strength of the impulse is going to be 10 times whatever the counter is. So depending on how far you've pulled it back, it will be 10 times that, so up to 1,000. And the angle, because zero is to the right, 90 is upwards, so 90. Brilliant. And then we just need to do one more condition. So new condition, the timer on event fire. We need to reset the counter back to zero. So on pullback, we're going to right click and set counter to zero. And that way, it completes the whole process because if the counter is zero, it means that the plunger is the position is moved back to the top. Um, and it happens needs to happen in this order. It checks the ball hits the plunger before it sets the counter to zero. Otherwise, it would be ten times zero and it wouldn't move at all. So if we go to the frame editor. Let's move our pinball into the shooter lane. We need to test our application. So if you pull it just onto the scroll bar, it will start scrolling. And there we go. You can save your work, run application, but prepare to be disappointed. It just falls straight through. We need to click on the plunger. You need to, in the movement properties windows, movement type, we need to change it to physics background movement. That way we can make it an obstacle and then the obstacle rule will apply. Shape of first image is good because then the ball will slightly overlap it and we can turn off the auto rotation and smooth rotations and test it again. Pull back and then let go and the ball fires up. And the longer we hold it, the higher the ball will fire. Save your work. So now we've got the plunger working and the ball being able to fire up the table, we're going to add the flippers in a similar way. So I'm just going to make sure that I can see the edge of the screen because I'm going to add some counters in here in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to insert some active objects for the flippers. So insert, active, click to put it down. And I'm going to right click and edit it. And I'm going to import the flipper object. Now, the way that Click Team calculates centers of objects and um, center of mass means that the rotation point is always based around the center. Now, that's not useful for the flipper because the flipper has a, a rotation point sort of around this circle here, and then the center of mass would be there. So to balance it out, I've had to mirror the flipper and this is why we've got the flipper covers here. And so it means that you can position it and we'll just rename it in the about properties and we'll call it flipper left. But then we can order it to back. So right click and order to back. And so that we're only actually seeing the bit of the flipper that we want to. We need to change this in terms of its movement properties, we want to change it to once again, physics background, and we want it to be an obstacle. Now, we also need it to know what angle it's gonna start off at. So we're gonna add an alterable value to it called rest angle, so that the computer knows what angle to start it off at, so, and return it to, so new, and double click on alt for value A and we'll call this rest angle. And because in terms of degrees, it starts off at zero and goes all the way around back to 360, our rest angle is going to be 340, sort of 20 degrees from the zero. Right, we can clone this now. So right click and clone and the cloned one we'll rename in its about properties, click on it and go to about properties and call it flipper right. And in terms of its alterable values, in terms of its rest angle to 200, so 20 degrees further on from 180. I'm going to position that 
here. Now, you might need to do a little bit of fiddling around to get the gap right. Ideally, you want the gap to be the exact same size as the ball so that the ball can nearly get lost down there. But you also want the flippers to match up. So you might need to adjust things on your frame to get them to fit exactly. And you can use the left and right arrows when things are selected to move things pixel by pixel. So I think that will just about do. You can also add multiple flippers in. So I've got a section at the top higher up that I can copy my left flipper and then paste it down here as well and order it to back. The great thing is that with pinball tables, all the flippers work off the, the left side work off the same button and the right side work off the same button. So as long as it's the same object, flipper left, and we've got a flipper left, we don't need to worry about any extra code. We will though, in the same way as the plunger had some counters, we will need to add some counters to calculate their power and also their angle. Uh, we calculated the height on this, pulling back on these, we're going to calculate the angle. So we're going to insert a new object and it's going to be a counter. And then we're going to name it left side and then we'll clone it, right click and clone it and select this one. And we'll call this one the right side. And then for the events, so click on the event editor and click on the bottom number so that we can insert a new group of events to tidy it up. And we will call these flippers. So new condition on the keyboard, upon pressing a key, and I'm going to choose from my left flipper Z. And then I'm going to repeat an event so that I'm going to have an event happen 60 times so that I can move the flipper one degree every time it runs this event and that means that I can check for collisions much more accurately. So upon pressing Z I want under the timer to fire an event a number of times after a given delay. So no delay because we want it to be instantaneous and number of events 60 because I'm going to move it 60 degrees up and the delay between each I'm going to use a calculation and just say one thousandth of a second and name it and we're going to call it left up because we're just lifting the left flippers up I'm going to copy that for the the right hand side I'll do it the fast way that we that I showed you before that you can drag down. So upon pressing, double click this, drag it down, new condition, change it, double click to a um, forward slash, which is the opposite side to Z. And then you've got space bar in the middle, so it sits nicely. Drag this down and then we're going to edit it and then press OK for the timings. OK for 60, but it's going to be called right up. OK for the delay in between and we're going to call it right up. Great. Now we need to make that happen. So we're going to set the new condition for the event. So the timer on event left up, make sure it's written the same, make sure you keep the, the double quotation marks and we're going to add to the left side one, add to counter one. And we will then make sure that the left flipper, you can right click, we're going to set its angle. So scale and angle, it's just off screen. Let me see if I can get it back. So under the left flipper, make sure it's the left one because they look identical. You can tell because it says flipper left and we're going to change its angle, set the angle to be whatever its rest angle is. So click on left flipper values, get its rest angle, and then we're going to add on the left side so click on left side current value and maximum speed because it's a pinball game great then we're going to do the same for the right side so i'm just going to drag down onto new condition and double click to change it to right up now I want it the right side. I want to add one to counter, so I'm drag across. If you make a mistake, you can drag a blank tick 
across a blank square across and it will remove your current one so we're not going to drag this tick across because there's too many differences so it's right click scale angle set angle and then we're going to get its rest angle so we're going to get the values a to m rest angle this time we're going to minus because we're rotating the opposite direction we're rotating um clockwise and angles are measured anti-clockwise so we're going to minus the current value of the right side rather than plus so that's the differences there but still maximum speed zero for maximum speed so we're going to set it that the flippers reposition when we've let go so new condition keyboard and this time repeat while key is pressed z and we're going to negate it like we did with the spacebar before with the plunger so when you're not pressing z then all of the left flippers should their angle right click under them scale angle set angle they just need to return to their rest position so whatever their values a to m of their rest angle is set it to that and zero for maximum speed great and also we can set the counter for the left side back to zero and we'll do that again for the forward slash so i'm going to drag this down because it's so similar let's drag it onto the words new condition double click on it and just press forward slash and right click underneath the right flipper and say angle set angle to be whatever the right flippers values a to m rest angle is so put it back to where it should be and also we want to set the right side counter to zero i'm just going to drag that across fantastic nearly there now we just need to work out if a collision's happening so we're going to click on new condition on the timer and check on the event left up make sure it's about exactly the same as all your other ones and you keep the quotation marks and we want to right click and insert if the flipper is overlapping another object the ball so if the angles changed which it does there and it's overlapping then we want to apply an impulse to the ball so um, I'm going to right click movement physics apply impulse now the strength of the impulse is going to be a hundred minus whatever the um, left side current value is so it gets weaker and weaker so if you hit it at the bottom uh, sort of when the flipper's lowest it's going to have the most impact but if you hit it when the flipper's fully extended it's going to have less impact so there's the strength and we're going to use the angle so enter the angle we're going to use the angle of the flipper so we're going to get the angle so click on the flipper scale angle get angle but at the end we're going to add 90 degrees because it's going to bounce off sort of perpendicular it's not going to bounce off the same direction the flipper's facing because it's going to hit and bounce off okay and then we need to do that for the right side so i'm just going to drag down left up double click and change it to right up you can double click on a word to select just a word as well that's a quick shortcut and then we want to right click and insert and say if the right flipper right is overlapping the pinball then we want to apply an impulse and this time it's going to be minus 90 degrees because it's it's the other side so we want to movement physics apply impulse we want it to be 100 minus whatever the right side current value is and then we want to set it to the angle of the right flippers minus 90 okay so uh, we can test that out i'm going to save that and test it out to save time you can go to your frame editor and just move the move the ball nearer the flippers so when you press the flipper then it should hit up you can also check with your flippers you can see that they're going past the bottom so let's just uh, 
move them upwards a bit to solve that issue as well so that they don't stick out the bottom when they rotate around. I'm just going to save it as the name of my game. So I'm just going to call it Pinball now. I'm just renaming mine to match the name of the game. So we're going to insert what's called the slingshot. It's going to do it in two parts. So it's a sort of triangular piece that fires the ball back from the bottom play field into the mid play field to mean that the game lasts a bit longer. It's like an automatic flipper. So we're going to insert, make sure you clicked on your frame, insert a new object, and it's going to be backdrop for the main part of the slingshot. And we're going to right click and edit it and open up to import and just choose slingshot. Now we have got some textured ones um, or some plain ones. I'm going to use the plain ones for this, but we've got one set up for the horrible game with pictures on, but we're going to have plain ones and center of mass. That's fine. Pop down. Now our runtime options, sorry, we're going to change it to an obstacle. And then in about properties, we'll call it slingshot one. And then if we right click and clone it, we'll end up with another one. And then if we right click and edit that, we can flip it, we can mirror horizontally, and then we've got the other side. And you can position them. They position behind the flippers, um, allowing the ball to uh, sort of have some sort of lanes, some, some gutters and such to, to fall down the side. Now that's only part one. The second part is to add the rubber for them. Now this is going to have to be an active object because it's going to have a physics property of elasticity to make it bouncy. So we're going to insert new object and active. Okay. Click to put it down, right click edit and let's open up an import and slingshot rubber. There it is. Press okay. Okay. And we're just going to position this across the slingshot there. Now let's rename it um, SS rubber one. And in its movement properties, we can change it from static to physics background. And we're going to give it some elasticity. So the elasticity is going to be 200, meaning that it will make the ball bounce back twice as hard as it hits it. Also, we're going to do a few other things. We're going to give it some values. We're going to give it some points for, for hitting on the slingshot. So new and where it says alt for value a, we'll double click on that and we'll change it to points. And because we're theming our game around binary uh, for the horrible, um, well, Halloween and binary. So we'll give it just 11 points or one one point we'll have the points just ones and zeros you choose any value for yours that's great but we need to also put it in a, a qualifier so in terms of events click in the blank space with qualifiers edit add and we'll put all the points in something called a bonus group and we'll add some rules for that in a bit so what we've done is we've set its name we've set its movement its elasticity its points and um added it into a qualifier. So we're going to clone that. So right click and clone object. And then you can right click and edit it and flip by mirroring horizontally, flip horizontally. There we go. And move that into position as well. Don't forget to save your work. And we're going to add in some rules for the drain at the bottom and getting the ball to reappear over here. So we're going to insert some lives to represent how many balls we've got. So insert new object and choose lives and press OK. And if you right click and edit, I'm just going to use the same picture as the actual ball. So I'm going to import the ball. And I'm just going to click on the lives object and stretch it to be long and thin. So it looks like the balls are sat in this sort of channel over here. Great. So let's go to the event editor and we're going to click on the bottom condition, just a number of it, and then click on insert 
group of events and let's call it balls for the creation and destruction of them so so do a new condition that if the pinball if its position its y position the up down value is greater than the frames so we click on the storyboard the chessboard frame height add another 30 pixels or so just to give it some time to some distance to get fully off the screen then we want to do a few things we want to destroy the ball we want under the player controls under the joystick we're going to number of lives subtract from number of lives one because we've lost a ball and then we're going to fire an event after the delay now in pinball it's not an immediate thing when your ball goes down it counts up your scores it does a few sort of moving things and it physically has to move the ball so we're going to allow three seconds before it launches the next event and in between the quotations the double quotations we'll call it new ball so on a new condition we will also say that when we press the space bar which is the same as the plunger we will fire the event new ball now this is so that we can start the game so we'll fire an event after a given delay and this time no seconds just immediately new ball now that's going to mean that a new ball appears every time we press spacebar so we'll need to limit it in this uh, next new condition so new condition click on the timer on event new ball again get used to writing it and we need to check a few things so we can't have a new ball when we've already got a ball in play so if we right click on this and insert we can check that the pinball pick or count compared to the number of pinball objects if the number of pinball objects is equal to zero then you can run this condition but also we need to check we've still got some lives so right click on the words number of and insert and then click on the player compare compare to the player's number of lives and it needs to be greater than zero and then at that point we can we can make a new ball so what we'll need to do is create a new ball so underneath create new object we'll right click create object going to be a pinball press ok and let's just create it down here so just the x will be the center of the ball so that's fine okay and another new condition that if on the keyboard upon pressing key spacebar and this time the lives are zero so right click and insert and this is the player's joystick compared to the number of lives zero and it's compared to the number of lives not when lives reach zero that's an instant event but what number of lives are zero upon pressing spacebar then at that point we can restart the application so let's go to our frame editor let's get this ball to fall down and see if it subtracts from the lives there we go now so these these lives aren't showing and that's because they're not actually being displayed here they're getting displayed below this point because in the runtime options i need to say that they follow the frame and that means that their position isn't fixed it, their position stays in this area rather than if i put them at the top of the screen they'd always be in the top corner so they're getting shown too low so that will fix that so let's try it again great now what we need to do is we need to start off without this pinball and it's safe to delete it because we create it let's run our application starts off showing the top of the table and when we press spacebar the ball's created it takes one off the list fantastic we can fire the ball up let's try firing it a bit harder than that you can fire the ball up lose it and get another ball again great stuff
save your work. Now we're going to add in a way to display our score and what's happening on the pinball table. So we're going to create a new layer for this. So we're going to click on the layer toolbar and we're going to click on the white piece of paper for new and make sure we click into that new layer, layer two. So make sure it's selected and blue. Let's insert a new object and let's just have a quick backdrop. And this we can click to put it in and we can then set its color. So normally on a pinball table, you'd have a sort of a top box that would show everything that's happening. We're just going to have a little banner across the top. So get that there. It doesn't need to be too neat. I'm going to set it to be black so it doesn't stand out too much from the table. And we're going to insert two different things in here. We're going to have our score displayed here and also a string that we can use later on. So insert new object and just find score, not high score, but score. Click to put it down. <laughs> black on black. So just be careful if you drop it there. Let's change its color first. So it's numbers but we'll change it to text and we'll then click on text options uh, we'll change its color immediately do an orangey color and choose a font now if you're going to uh, have a themed game then choose a font that fits in so i think that there's korea is quite a computery font i probably want that's about size 45 and i can place that in there you could also add in here, make sure it's long enough to fit all your score on there. Um, you could also fit in some sort of artwork for the game in this corner if you want. And um, also in this side, we can put a string that we can use later for some optional stuff. So insert a new object, uh, string, so writing, click to put it down. I'll need to change the color again. Let's make it yellow. And let's have it courier as well, but not very big font. So let's make it let's make it 22. Stretch it out to the size you want. And also I want to center this. Uh, I don't want it. I don't want it being off to the left. So make sure you click on it once. Wait a second, then click on it again. And then you can get the resizing up. Let's change that to center and center and let's double click on it to change what it says. Let's have it saying press space bar to launch ball. There we go. Now let's go in the about properties and give it a better name. Let's call it info. That's it done with the top box there. Let's um, click back onto frame one and lock it so that we can't ever change it. Now, if you run your application, you'll see that the bar, the score and the string are right at the top. But if I press space bar, you'll see that you get the score and the string, but you don't get the bar. And that's because it's following the frame and it's staying at the top. So what we need to do is we need to click on layer two in the layer toolbar and change the scrolling coefficient, the X and Y scrolling coefficient to zero, meaning it won't, it won't move. So just type zero into each of those columns, each of those rows and run application. Now everything on layer two will remain exactly in the right place. And that'll resolve that. Save your work. So make sure you've got layer one selected because layer two is locked now. And um, we're going to insert some bumpers, some jet bumpers or pop bumpers in the top section. They're sort of circles that bounce the ball around. So insert a new object. It's going to be active. Drop it down. Right click and edit it. And we'll import jet bumper. Now make sure that import as animation is ticked or checked because that um that means that we're going to get both of the pictures for frame one and frame two but that's zero and one we'll see later that they're 
labeled zero and one. So, okay, put that down. Uh, let's name it. So in the about properties, let's call it big jet bumper. In its movement, we want to change it to physics background. We want to make sure it's an obstacle. We want the elasticity set to 150. Uh, shape of a first image needs to change to circle on collision shape. And then we can go into its values, new value, change the ultra value A to points. And let's give it 101 points, maybe. Um, something binary, so 101. And in the events, qualifiers, edit. We're going to add it to that bonus group because we want to give it points. And then we want to also add it to another group, something that signifies, let's go with explosions because it sort of blasts the ball out of the way. Great. Um, you can then pull in or duplicate more copies. We can hold down control on the keyboard and drag if you want to add extra copies in. But what you need to do is make sure that there's enough space for the ball to access around so it doesn't get trapped. Okay, uh, you can also clone them if you want and click on the cloned copy and change the about properties. Let's have this as a small jet bumper. You can either click on it again to resize or use the size and properties and let's set this to sort of 180 by 180 and have a smaller one. You can add that in, you can hold down control and duplicate it further down into the midfield and you can add them wherever you think's best. So the ball will bounce around but let's add the points in. So let's go to the event editor and click on the last number and click on insert and group of events and let's call this points. So new condition, if a ball is overlapping any of the bumpers, the explosion group, then we want to, under the player object here, right click on the score, score, add to score, whatever the explosion value points. We could have done it with bonus as well, but it's the same thing. So if it's there, we'll add the points. We also want to change a flag to on. Now this is for the illuminated animation. So this is so that you can show it lit up. So set flag one to on, and then we'll drag that down to new condition and right click and negate as we've done before. So if it's not overlapping, what we need to do is just turn this flag back off. And a flag is like a switch, it's on or off. So the bulb is gonna be on or off. So let's code that in, new condition. If any of the bonuses, because we want this to apply to everything, that gives points, if their flag gets turned on, animation, change animation frame, now it's zero and one. See the first frame is zero, not one. So it's not one and two, it's zero and one. So zero is the off and one is the on. So let's do that. Let's drag that down uh, to new condition, right click and negate it. And then flag zero is off. Then we can go right click here, animation, change animation frame to zero, which is the first one. There we go. And you can, Go to your frame editor now, and you could drag a pinball into your frame because we don't have any to start off with, and place it down and try that out. So run application. Now, I occasionally have an issue that when you start, I'm just restarting my application. I occasionally have an issue that they're locked on at the beginning. Um, I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure how to solve that yet, but uh, if I do, I'll let you know in the web page. But there we go, that's working. And let's get rid of that pinball and get on with adding some other targets. So we want to add some more things to give points. So let's add some rollover targets. We're going to insert a new object. It's going to be active. Click to put it down. I want to right click and edit it. I want to open up and you can choose any of the colors. So blue light, green light, any of them. So uh, let's go with the yellow and choose number one. 
so that when you import it, you will get number two importers animation. You'll get the second one as well. Great. Now these will activate when the ball rolls over them. So let's give them a name. Um, I'll call it top rollover. And we will also give it some values. So new and change odd value to points so it matches up with the other ones. And let's give quite a lot of points to this, 1100. Zero, zero. Then we could go to the event editor and put it in a couple of groups. Now we definitely want it in the bonus group. And we also want to add it to another group for all the rollover targets. So let's choose glow because they, they can light up and glow. Fantastic. You can hold down control and you can move it to where you want. So you can place extra ones around the play field and we'll do the events for them now. So a new condition, if the pinball collides with another object, any of the glows, then what we want to do, we want to add the score. So underneath the player object, we go to score, add score, whatever the glows value points are. And we also want to set their flag to on to light them up and that will apply to that rule. So they'll get lit, lit up. Um, we also want to turn them off at the end. So every time we get a new ball under group glow, we're going to right click and flags and set them off. So if we run our application, I'm just going to start a new application just so the lights are turned off and we fire the ball up. You can see there as it hits, it lights up the individual sections. Fantastic. Now we'll add in some drop targets. So now we're going to add something to the midsection, some drop targets. Um, they block an area until they're knocked down or sometimes they release a bonus when you, when you knock them all down. So let's insert a new object active, click to put it down, right click and edit it import and let's choose drop target one and import as animation so that we get number two as well there they are uh, we need to change a few things let's start off with movement let's change it to uh, physics background um, but actually we're not going to make it an obstacle um, and the reason for that is that we need the ball collision to um, to to actually collide with it. And if it's an obstacle, it's gonna bounce off it before the rule for the drop target happens because we've already got some code saying to stop when it hits an obstacle and that's right at the top of the code. And because we it runs things in order, it won't actually be able to activate it lower down. So we'll leave it just as is a background object. We will set its values. We will add a new value, alt value A, we'll call that points and set that quite high. So sticking with the binary theme to uh, 11,011. And we'll go to the events and add it into some qualifiers. So we'll add it into the bonus qualifiers. We have to do that so that it adds in the score. And shields. Shields will work well for this as a descriptor. Right, let's go to the event editor. So we'll add a new condition. If the ball collision with another object a shield and let's right click and insert and the shield is up so alt for values flag is off flag zero so if it hasn't been hit and the ball hits into it we want the ball to stop we want the player to get points so under the joystick score add to score and let's find out the shield values value a to m get, retrieve its points and then we want the shield to fall down so flags set on and because the flags get set on then that means it will change its animation and when the flag is on the ball will go over it so it's like it's dropped down so let's give that a try go to our frame editor let's just drag and drop a pinball in and let's move the drop target below so it just drops onto it oh make sure you name the drop target 
if you run run our application and there we go now to position your drop targets um, you can click on them once and then again and then if you rotate all of the same objects will rotate to the same angle and normally they align along a, a wall somewhere or like I say block off an area and then you can clone them to get a different angle coming out so to make your pinball table have a bit more of a theme you can name each of your points so for any of the things that are in the bonus category in the so the rollover targets the um, the jet bumpers and the drop targets if you go into their ultra ball values and add an ultra ball string you can name them so you might call it ghost hit um, if you have drawn some ghosts in here if you wanted to do a halloween themed one or a horror themed one like us um, for us because it's binary themed we're gonna call this a terabyte and you can add that in so do that on all of your um all of your points and then in the event editor and then we can list all of the things that give us points so if we just click on player one here you can see you've got these it's filtered view of just showing us when player one has an action and so we've got three three conditions here so under the info window if we right click and change the ultra ball string we can get whatever the bonus string is so the name that we've just given it and then if we put a plus sign we can add a new line so you can type that in with a uh, new line dollar but you can just click on special and go to strings and go to new line so new line and then we can add a string version so str dollar of what the points are so if we click on group bonus click on values and then get the points that way the top of the screen will show us what we've hit now you can just drag this down and copy it to the other three rules where the points get added if we test the application so i'll just get rid of the um just get rid of the pinball at the bottom from previous testing and if i run my application just press f2 to reset the lights off um spacebar to launch the ball goes up there we go and it starts labeling what we're getting as we go down i haven't labeled the smaller ones but you can label them all now to get high scores in pinball tables quite often you have to get bonuses for lighting all of the rollover targets or the drop down targets within a certain bank so a collection of them it's called a bank um so we're going to add some code in to do that so if we click on to one of our bonus items we're going to add two new ultra values to them to each of them so click new twice change value b to um the bank id and then value c to the bonus so i'm going to set these to be in bank one and because they're the same they're all in bank one it's all the same value and the bonus for getting all of them lit up is going to be loads is going to be uh, that much that's probably a bit too much seeing as the high score well i think it'd be okay the high score kind of maxes out when you get into the trillions it can't handle it so um that that seems fine but we won't go any higher and then for these drop targets here i'll do the same i'll add a bank id and i will add in add in bonus as well so these need to have a unique bank id so number two and the bonus for getting these will be that much right so the only other thing to add in is we can insert a new object a counter so that we can work out which bank we're looking at so let's just rename this and we'll call it check we'll call it bank check and go into the event editor we'll add a new group so we'll click at the bottom insert a group of events let's call this banks so i click new condition 
and the ball collision with another object. If it hits any of the bonuses, then we want to do a few different things. First of all, for the bank check, so if we right click on it, we want to set that counter to be whatever the bonuses bank is. Now, because I haven't set it on all of them, it hasn't got the name bank ID on all all of them so it's reverted to ultra value b but that's that's fine that's the right one that's the right position so it sets it to the bank id or value b as we've got there we also um will need to fire an event so after zero seconds we'll fire the event check now a new condition when the event check happens we will then search through each object so we will count for each object and we'll do we'll call it bonus so for each of the bonus objects we will run the loop bonus so to make sure a bonus happens all of the bonus objects in that bank will have to be lit up so the flag is on so New condition, if the bonus, if they are looping through and we're checking the bonus loop and the value B compared to the ultra value B is equal to whatever the current value of the bank check is. And if it's off the flag, so we shouldn't get a bonus, at that point then we'll set the counter to zero for the bank id so the bank id might be one it goes through checks them says oh some of the banks aren't lit on one so it sets it back to zero so we know that there's been a successful bonus if the bank is greater the bank check is greater than zero so new condition bank check compared to the value if it's got a greater value than zero and we'll need to find out which bonus bank that is so and compared to one of the odd values of the bonuses if odd value b is equal to the bank check current value that means that um, we can use those values for the score so score add to score whatever whatever value c is the bonus points so add the bonus points to the score then for the bonuses Let's set the flags to off so that they turn off again so that we can get the bonus again. And then um, we can actually um, set the counter for bank check back down to zero. And if we want to, we can set the info. So this is a bit complicated, but we can change the odd for string to say, well, let's say bonus, bonus, and then add in whatever the string a is which is the name of the bank then let's add a new line so plus the special strings new line then let's add in a string version of value c which is the bonus value okay like i said not simple but it will just write out which bonus we got and where from fantastic right let's move things about so we can check test it so what we'll do is we'll get rid of a couple of these rollovers and get the pinball and add it to the top and we'll use our tilts to check it out. So let's run our application. There, and there we go. I've got the terabyte bonus. Let's see if I can get it again. Yeah, fantastic. Works like a charm. Now we'll have a look at adding in some restrictions on the tilting so that you can't just tilt everything everywhere. If you need to put things back, you can press Control and Z to undo, to pop things back and save your work. So real life pinball tables will allow you to tilt them a bit, but then they'll trigger an alarm where you can't do anything. So we're gonna insert a new object, a counter, to be our tilt alarm. So put it in. Go to about properties tilt we name it tilt and also set the minimum value to zero is quite important right we we'll go to the event editor if we go up to our tilt conditions and actions 
what we'll do is we'll say that every time we tilt, we'll add to the counter. So right click on the, upon pressing up arrow and add to counter. And we'll do a random range, but let's say, give them a chance between 20 and 80. So it's gonna pick a number averaging out about 50. We've dragged down these actions to each of the tilt movements, but we need a new condition to sort of reset the counter over time. So new condition, the counter every hundredth of a second. And then we want to insert, and this is our threshold on the tilt. So uh, let's compare the counter to a value and it needs to be lower than a, let's say a hundred. You can set it to 200, you can set it to, um, 300 but remember this number we're going to use it several times so if the tilt counter is less than 100 every hundredth of a second we're going to subtract from counter one so it goes back so we now know that when the counter gets above 100 it's going to stay there so we can limit things so let's have a look anything to do with score will limit so uh let's have a look down subtract one from lives no that'll stay so these three Let's insert tilt, compare the counter to value is lower than 100 or whatever you set your threshold to be. Now I'm gonna drag that lower than 100 to the number of the line below and it'll add it in. If you put it on the words, it'll replace it, but the number it'll add it in. So that limits it that tilts, we won't get any points once we've tilted there. And then the other thing that we don't want to do is be able to use the flippers. So if we have a look at the keyboard controls and here's the two on these lines. So we're going to right click on the words, insert the tilt, compare counter to a value and once again, lower than a hundred. You could add a second counter called tilt maximum and then you could set that to be 100 and or whatever value you wanted and say if the tilt value is lower than the tilt maximum um, and then that means you can change your tilt value whenever you want to without changing all the conditions right so if we run my application press f2 all right i'll fire the ball upwards I'll tilt the ball about massively Yep, I can't, I can't use anything, not getting any points. Great, that works fine. And, but then we have an issue that I still can't press anything. So we need to say that whenever there's a new ball, so let's uh, find that condition. It's a timer condition. So on timer event new ball, here we go, 31, we need to set that tilt counter set counter back to zero then that way we can uh, replay so save your work not easy to explain um, but just to give you an idea of how i created the artwork for the table so this is the plain table and if i zoom out what i did is i used in windows there's something called the snipping tool and what i did is i i selected all of the table and copied and pasted it into Photoshop or your drawing program. Got all the artwork and dragged and dropped it in um, and used, used that overlay. And then I took the overlay off and then saved that as an individual piece of artwork. So then when I'm back in Click Team, so I could double click on the quick backdrop to edit it, open up the new play field and then it should align exactly with everything that I wanted. And then I did the same for the bumpers and just save them over so that the whole image just matched up with how exactly I wanted it. With sounds, we use a website called freesound.org and you can get some uh, creative Commons zero, which means you don't need to accredit, or you could use some Creative Commons work that you can credit in your work. So you just need to add a credit screen. Um, but everything in Pinball has a has, has a sound. So every time um, 
you press something, you kind of want a noise playing. So we've included different things for background music um, and for when uh, when the ball gets fired, when you hit the ball, um, when you use the flippers, all those things, you can add in some sound effects. And enjoy. Make your own pinball table and uh, share it with your friends. Uh, share it with us. If you get stuck, let us know. Uh, we'll be playing some pinball.